In class today, we talked a little bit about the menstrual cycle in terms of kind of what was happening in the ovary versus what was happening in the uh, uterus. But what we didn't have a chance to really get into was uh, what's happening in terms of the hormones, the endocrine system, uh, and how it's affecting uh, the menstrual cycle. Uh, this slide does a really nice job of kind of summarizing all of the different steps labeled uh, appropriately A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, showing us that A from the hypothalamus uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone, hormone GnRH uh, triggers the pituitary gland to release some hormones FSH and LH uh, to send messages to the ovaries. Uh, as you can see by the green lines here, sends messages to the ovaries to tell the ovaries uh, it is now time to mature a follicle. And so without that message, the follicles don't mature. Uh, with the message, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, hormone gets the follicles uh, going and, and kind of triggers that, that event inside the ovary. The, uh, the follicle then uh, starts to secrete itself uh, some uh, progesterone and estrogen, which uh, sends a message back to the brain saying uh, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing so please don't get any more follicles stimulated and so that is some sort of a negative feedback loop saying we're going in the right direction please don't send any more but at the right moment in time uh, when there's uh, the correct level of estrogen and progesterone there is a message sent and that's coming over on this side uh, to the brain that says now it is that the right time uh, brain to uh, cause ovulation to occur and uh, the brain now sends another message down to the ovary uh, sending an increase or a surge in LH and FSH that triggers ovulation and so there is a sequence of events sequence of events that causes uh, this menstrual cycle to be regulated by these different hormones and the four biggies are LH, FSH, progesterone and estrogen. We can see on this slide here uh, the events uh, in terms of the days 0 to 28 and uh, the events occurring in the ovary compared to the events occurring uh, in the actual, actual uterine uterus. Uh, the hormones are labeled up here and uh, we've got LH and FSH and estrogen and progesterone. When it comes to uh, the beginning of the cycle, you can see that the LH and FSH levels over here are, are rising just a little bit, which is what causes the follicle to start to mature over here. And as the follicle matures, uh, it starts to itself release the hormones uh, estrogen and then eventually progesterone. But as the estrogen le levels rise, uh, that's what causes then this surge in LH. And you can see as the days go on, we're moving in this direction. As the days go on, uh, the estrogen level rises, and that triggers the brain to release more LH and FSH in this peak right up over here. Uh, that surge in LH is what triggers the event of ovulation. As ovulation occurs, there are some cells left behind in the uterus. Uh, the follicle releases the secondary oocyte, but the corpus luteum uh, stays behind. The corpus luteum is endocrine tissue itself, and it continues to release estrogen, but releases also, in addition, uh, some progesterone. The progesterone that is released, uh, you can see, mimics quite nicely the uterine lining. Uh, as progesterone levels rise, so does the thickness of the uterine lining. And that is all in an effort to get the uterus ready for implantation. So down here at about day 14 is when we saw the ovulation occur. Nice arrow there to ovulation. And the uterus isn't quite ready yet at ovulation, but the good news is it takes about seven to nine days uh, for the developing uh, embryo, and in this case, the developing uh, mass of cells, uh, to get to the uterine lining uh, before it's going to implant. And so about seven to nine days later, so at about day 21 to 23, so that's down in this range down here, that's when implantation is most likely to occur, and you can see that's when the uterine, uterine lining is the thickest. So that's when it is uh, the best conditions for a developing baby to implant itself into the uterine lining. 
a couple of animations now to help us better understand how this works. The release of a female egg occurs as part of a repeating sequence of events known as the menstrual cycle. First, the pituitary gland releases molecules of FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. In the ovaries, follicles are hollow balls of cells which contain a single immature egg called an oocyte. FSH stimulates these tiny follicles to produce the hormone estrogen. This causes the oocyte to mature and the follicle to swell with fluid. Estrogen released in the blood also stimulates the growth of the uterine lining, the endometrium, by increasing cell divisions. Just before the middle of the cycle, the pituitary gland releases a second hormone called LH, or luteinizing hormone. The final spurt of growth that results ruptures the follicle. This releases an oocyte into the fallopian tube in an event we call ovulation. After ovulation, the follicle cells that remain in the ovary form a structure called the corpus luteum. This yellow tissue continues to produce estrogen and a second hormone called progesterone. In the uterus, progesterone prepares for the arrival of a future embryo by quieting normal contractions and stimulating endometrial cells to secrete important nutrients. If the egg is not fertilized, hormone levels drop and the endometrium breaks down. The uterus releases the resulting blood and tissue in a menstrual flow, after which the cycle begins again. 